Look at that! What is that perfectly shaped ice circle doing in the middle of the river? How did it even appear there? For such a circle to form, the conditions must be very peculiar. So let's see if you can make a similar ice formation at home. Ice circles are also called ice disks and ice pans. They form in rivers, lakes, and creeks when ice gathers in the center of the body of water moved by an eddy. The thing is, random eddies tend to follow circular routes. And in the winter, ice crystals often gather in such slow-moving waters. As a result, they form circular disks of ice. The current doesn't let these disks move away, it just slowly rotates them in one place. As an ice circle turns, it hits other chunks of ice or the shore and gets lathed down until it's perfectly round. There's another way for ice circles to form. When a body of water gets covered with ice, a current traveling underneath might break off a chunk of ice and start rotating it until it's shaped like a circle. These disks can be really large, up to 50 feet across. Another amazing ice phenomenon is called penitentes. These are snow formations found at very high altitudes. Numerous and closely spaced, they look like long, thin blades of hardened snow or ice that point towards the sun. These icy spires grow over snow-covered and glaciated regions in the dry Andes at a height of more than 13,000 feet. Some penitentes are just several inches tall, while others reach 16 feet. That's around three human heights. Such jagged structures form due to the process called sublimation. It's a bit similar to melting, but in this case, the sun turns the snow directly into vapor without melting it first. In other words, the ice skips the liquid stage and goes from its solid form to gas. Curved areas of the surface heat up and sublimate faster than others, forming dents. That's how penitentes get formed, and that's why they lean in the direction of the sun's rays. Now, this is called rabbit ice. And isn't it cute? This phenomenon has other names too. Ice flowers, ice wool, ice ribbon. Pick whatever you like. I'll stick to rabbit ice. It forms when the air has cooled down to freezing temperatures. But the ground hasn't frozen yet. Sap in the plant stems expands while freezing, and it causes cracks along the stem. What happens next is water gets drawn out through these cracks. It freezes once it comes in contact with the air. This process forms super thin layers of ice, creating something that resembles ribbons or petals of ice. The same phenomenon happens with woody plants. But in this case, the ice is even thinner, more hair-like. These ice formations are incredibly delicate, so if you want to see rabbit ice, look for it in the early morning in shaded areas. You can find frost flowers floating on the surface of a newly frozen lake or sea. In 2009, a team of scientists from the University of Washington was sailing near the North Pole. That's when they discovered a large field of these pretty ice formations. But the best thing was that when they melted a few of these blossoms, they noticed that the water contained an unusually large number of bacteria. But how do these amazing ice formations appear? The air must be extremely cold, colder than the surface of the ocean, and very dry. When the air is so different from the ocean, its dryness pulls some moisture out of the water. The air gets humid, but just for a while. The cold makes the water vapor heavy. No wonder the air wants to get rid of this additional weight. So, crystal by crystal, the air turns back into ice, creating delicate flowers, sometimes reaching up to three inches in height. The ocean literally blossoms. Needle ice also has many names, and the most creative of them are frost columns, ice fringes, and ice castles. This type of ice occurs in a similar way to rabbit ice, but the water gets drawn out from the soil surface through narrow capillaries. All this water freezes in needle-like columns. At first sight, these formations look like baled hay, but made out of snow. And actually, it's quite an accurate description. You know how hay gets rolled up into large balls? Well, the same way snow rollers form. The wind blows a chunk of snow along the ground. As it rolls, it picks up even more snow, growing in size. Snow rollers are usually cylindrical and hollow inside because the very first layer of snow often flakes away as the roller moves. These snow formations can get up to two feet in diameter. They occur when the temperatures are near melting and there is a fresh layer of fluffy snow on the ground. Oh, and it shouldn't stick to the surface it lies on. 
Don't forget about the width, either. It should be strong enough to make the roller, well, roll, but not too strong to break it apart. These conditions sound rather precise. That's why snow rollers are so rare. But it's not only ice that creates amazingly beautiful things. Fire can do it too. Look at Pele's hair. These thin threads may look golden and pretty, but they're very dangerous to pick up. The wind sometimes catches small droplets of lava coming from active volcanoes. These droplets get carried miles away from the vent and are stretched into super thin glass wires, also called hair lava. Some strands can be as long as six feet. Have you warmed up yet? Then it's time to cool down again. On March 19, 2018, the inhabitants of Alabama had to run for their lives not to be hit by huge chunks of ice falling from the sky. It was the infamous hailstorm of Alabama which caused millions of dollars worth of damage. After the hailstorm, it looked as if the place had been thoroughly trashed by savages, broken shop windows, smashed car windshields, broken billboards, and holes in roofs. But what made researchers really excited was a hailstone found near the town of Cullman, Alabama. This softball-sized monster was more than five inches across and thus set a new state record. Now, look at these pretty bubbles. They're pockets of highly flammable and combustible methane gas. Trapped underwater, this gas forms psychedelic landscapes and stunning patterns. Typical for northern latitude lakes, such as Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada, these bubbles appear when animal remains, leaves, and plants fall into the water and get consumed by bacteria. These bacteria later excrete methane gas. But don't fall for the beauty of this phenomenon. When spring comes, the ice melts and the methane bubbles start to fizz and pop in a most amazing fashion. But if you happen to light a fire in the area, everything may go boom! Imagine surfing a perfect wave when it suddenly freezes. Well, it sure sounds creepy. Luckily, such things don't happen in life, right? Wrong. You can see mind-boggling frozen waves in Antarctica. These waves occur when the ice gets compressed and the ever-increasing pressure squeezes the air bubbles out of it. As for the beautiful blue color, it's the result of the ice melting and refreezing. And a bonus for you, frozen Niagara Falls. In 2018, the legendary waterfalls, located at the border between New York State and Ontario, Canada, managed to shock everyone into silence. Tourists who arrived to admire the power of the roaring water were astonished to find Niagara Falls frozen. Jumping ahead of myself, the waterfalls weren't frozen per se, since such a feat is impossible for a mass of flowing water that huge, but microscopic water droplets that got airborne off Niagara Falls as well as the mist, formed a crust of ice over the rushing water. As a result, you could be looking at the waterfalls and be sure that they were frozen. In reality, the water kept flowing, but it was hidden beneath the ice. So, you're getting ready for your adventure in the land of ice and fire. But before you switch your phone to Volcano Explorer mode, hear me out. You need to pack properly to get the most out of your trip. Now, never underestimate the Icelandic weather. It doesn't matter if you're going there in May or January, you can expect all seasons in one trip or even one day. If you're going in summer, pack both light and warmer layers and some good hiking boots. You'll definitely need a waterproof and windproof outer layer. Don't be shy to bring an insulated winter jacket. It's always better to take them off than not have it and freeze. One more thing you need to know about the Icelandic summer is that between June 15th and June 30th, you can expect something known as the midnight sun. The sun doesn't set until after midnight, and even then, it barely goes below the horizon, so it looks more like the evening twilight. Unless your accommodation has extra dark and thick curtains, you might have trouble sleeping when it's so light outside. That's why it's a good idea to pack a sleeping mask, and for the daytime, you'll definitely need sunglasses and sunscreen. Or you could just pop by in December when it's only light for 4 hours and 7 minutes a day. Winter temperatures aren't as terrible as you might think, but the snow and wind coming from all directions make things worse. So focus on staying warm and dry. An insulated jacket, another warm layer or two, thermal pants, reflective waterproof pants to stay dry and noticeable in the snows, 
a good warm hat, oh, and sturdy boots will literally take you a long way. Ice cleats as an add-on will help you stay stable on icy terrains. Spring and fall are pretty short, just like my dad, and the weather is also super unpredictable. So the same set of items you'd pack for winter will do. Even if you're going to Iceland in the coldest weather, definitely pack a swimsuit. Iceland Sea isn't the warmest in the world, but you'll need that swimsuit for outdoor pools and hot springs the country is full of. Since all the pools are heated with geothermal energy, they're always warm. The locals and tourists swim in all sorts of weather conditions. Yes, even in the snow. The Blue Lagoon is the most famous geothermal spa. It uses seawater coming from around 6,500 feet underground, and it comes with useful earth minerals. Once it gets heated up by a nearby geothermal plant, a mix of ocean and fresh water pours into a lava pool at a temperature of around 102 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets its postcard-worthy turquoise color from the silica in it reflecting sunlight. Definitely bring a reusable water bottle for the trip. You can refill it with tap water since it's perfectly safe and healthy. The country is full of pure springs and glaciers, and that high-quality water goes to every tap. There are zero chemicals in it, so it's officially some of the clearest kinds of water in the world. All you have to do is wait a bit when you change from hot to cold water. Hot water also comes to Icelandic homes straight from the spring and is heated by geothermal sources. The sulfur in it makes it smell like rotten eggs. Although it's yucky, it's totally harmless. Bottled water is overpriced and it literally comes from the same tap. Icelanders will have no problem speaking and understanding English. But if you want to feel more like a local, you could bring translation earbuds. Icelandic is pretty difficult to grasp on the go and might sound unusual. The language has less than half a million native speakers, but they're super proud of it, and it keeps growing. Instead of borrowing words from other languages for new concepts, they create new words or repurpose some old ones. The Icelandic for computer, for instance, totally translates as the number oracle. There are over 130 ways of saying wind, and 112 of them are written on a wooden walkway from the calmest to the strongest wind, just in case you want to learn them. There are also some concepts the English language just doesn't have. For example, this, window weather. It's the kind of weather that looks good from the inside, but once you step out, you regret your decision. Makes sense to me. In case, for some reason, you were planning to bring a horse to Iceland, stop right there. The Icelandic horse is one of the oldest and purebred horses in the world, with a history of the breed going back to the 10th century. The story goes that the ancestors of today's beauties were carefully selected to be brought to Iceland from Norway during the Viking years. And no one has imported any other horse breeds to Iceland since the 11th century. It is banned by law. This complete isolation helps the Icelandic horses stay super healthy and live a long life. These beauties used to be the only form of transportation in the country. They've adapted to survive in all kinds of weather conditions and have grown, although they still don't look huge. And oh, when you see it, never call it a pony. It can offend the locals. Now, I don't want to be the one to tell you, but your wish won't come true just because you threw a coin in one of Iceland's thermal springs. The signs forbidding throwing coins are all over the place for a good reason. The coins keep hanging in crystal clear waters, ruining the natural look of geysers and pools. Plus, researchers have proved that coins and other trash can change the color of the thermal water for good. That's precisely what happened in Yellowstone. The Morning Glory pool changed its color from tropical blue to green with orange and yellow hues. If you don't want that to happen to the beautiful Icelandic landscapes, then keep the coins for souvenirs or in your pocket. Now, elves are a big deal in Iceland. About half of the population believes in their existence. The local folklore sees elves as the hidden people who live in the lava fields. When someone wants to build something in one of those, they have to take into account the elves' opinions. Yes, these guys have a spokesperson who comes to meetings. Sometimes road construction is even diverted around boulders where the elves live so not to disturb them. These little guys go house hunting during the winter holiday season. And it is 13 elves called the Yule Lads who bring the young generation of Icelanders their gifts. 
If you want to learn more about the elves during your trip, you can sign up for Reykjavik's Elf School. You'll get textbooks, a legit elf diploma, and tea with cookies as a bonus. They might seem like a regular photo prop, but these little pyramids of rocks actually have a name and history. The humans of the past used to build cairns to be used as kind of a GPS system long before the concepts of cars and GPS was even created. Travelers mark certain spots along their routes to help other wanderers find a path. They used to be the only way of marking the routes, and you can still find them all over the island. Iceland, of course, has GPS now, but it's illegal to move rocks from the cairns because they're considered an important part of history. Plus, some hikers still use those pyramids for navigation. So, if you randomly build one of those, hikers can easily get lost as they'd follow the wrong route. Oops! Now, if you want to bring a good gift to your new Icelandic friends, a book is a great idea. For many years, the country had the highest rate of publishing books per capita in the world. On average, 1 out of 10 Icelanders publishes a book in their lifetime. There's even a special book-giving holiday. Icelandic sagas go back to the 13th century. Writers create their sagas even on napkins and coffee cups. Each geyser and waterfall has its own tale about heroes and heroines attached to it. You can also scan barcodes on public benches to listen to audiobooks on your smartphone. Cool! 80% of what's deep inside the world's oceans remains hidden to this day. That's because the ocean covers 70% of the planet's surface, and we only have access to a small portion of that. We can clearly see around 3 miles deep down inside the ocean. So it's no surprise that our most recent discoveries when it comes to wildlife come from the ocean. I mean, there's a lot to explore, like this new shark species called the genie's dogfish, or the longest animal ever found, a 154-foot-long jellyfish, which we just stumbled upon earlier this year in Australia. Somewhere in the Arctic and Antarctic seas, a strange phenomenon appears, confusing people to say the least. It's called frost flowers, but they're not plants at all, merely ice crystals. Frost grows on the long stem plants that manage to break the thin layer on the surface of young sea ice. Frost flowers aren't just made of water, though. They have a variety of microorganisms within, making them a small, temporary ecosystem. Turns out we don't have volcanoes just on the visible surface of the Earth. Submarine volcanoes are just as disruptive to their surrounding wildlife. If the data we have so far is correct, the ocean has the most productive volcanic systems on Earth, most of them being on average 8,500 feet below the surface of the water. A maelstrom, a powerful and at times dangerous whirlpool, is a source of nightmares for seafarers to this day. What sets a maelstrom apart from other whirlpools is that it comes in an extraordinary size and force. It's so powerful, it can even put larger ships in a lot of trouble. One of the most famous of them is called Naruto, and it's located near Awaji Island. Its tides move in and out from 8 to 12 miles per hour twice a day, making it one of the fastest in the world. The sinking of the Titanic is the historical event that made icebergs famous, am I right? Well, sometimes these icebergs even come with colored stripes. They can be brown, black, green, yellow, and blue. Obviously, they're called striped icebergs, and they get their colors from various natural reasons. Like the blue ones, for example, which turn up when the ice melts and freezes back up very quickly. If there are green stripes in the iceberg, it probably means it has some algae stuck somewhere in there. Other more earth-toned colors, like brown, yellow, or black, have other things to blame, like sediments the seawater picks up before freezing. Back in March 2019, scientists stumbled upon one of the most baffling phenomena ever to be found in the sea. During the exploration of one of the underwater volcanoes, they noticed what looked like a small lake, which was upside down. It was at least 6,500 feet below sea level. If you think that doesn't make any sense, well, that's because it's not real. Turns out it was nothing more than an optical illusion generated by the liquid in these upside-down pools. 
it gets up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit hot and is made of some harsh chemicals like sulfur and metals, which makes the illusion possible. The world's largest waterfall is also safely tucked underwater. It's located beneath the Denmark Strait, a portion of water that stands between Iceland and Greenland. If you suddenly grow fish gills, dive in there, and manage to comfortably breathe underwater, you'll be able to see a series of waterfalls that begin at 2,000 feet under the surface, but then drop down to a depth of 10,000 feet. In 2011, Swedish treasure hunters discovered an object on the bottom of the Baltic Sea that they described as strange and mysterious. It's oval shaped with unusual stair formations. The head of the team who made the discovery supposed it must have been constructed tens of thousands of years ago, even before the Ice Age, and could have been part of the underwater city of Atlantis. Experts who analyze the object believe it to be a regular glacial deposit or some other natural formation, but they still don't know for sure. Now, they don't call it the Black Sea for nothing. Located at the southeastern extremity of Europe, it even has sea smoke, which is basically steam coming out of the surface of the water. This happens because of the humidity of the oceanic water, which neutralizes the cooler wind blowing on the water surface, creating this vapor-like phenomenon. If you ever check out the ocean surface during sunset and sunrise, you might get lucky enough to see green flashes. You'll have to pay attention, though, because it merely lasts for a couple of seconds. They happen because of the natural prismatic effect of the atmosphere of the Earth. During sunsets and sunrises, light emerging from the sun gets diverged into multiple colors, a process that looks like there's a green flash emitted by the water. Red tides do happen a lot of times, and although there's no need to panic when you see one of those, you still must be careful. The technical term for this phenomenon is algal blooming. It happens when there's a rapid growth or blooming of algae in the waters of the ocean. Because of the chemicals these algae contain, they may be trouble for birds, animals, and even humans. So don't be so quick to jump into the waters should you ever experience it. Octopuses and squid have a special trait that sets them apart from other sea creatures. They have three hearts. While Valentine's Day must be very special for them. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make them more romantic, but they do need these three hearts to function properly. They have one major heart that helps with circulation all around their bodies, and two bronchial hearts that are responsible for pumping near their gills. So, with three hearts and eight arms, when the octopus hugs you, you'll know she's very sincere. Based on a study published in 2013, dolphins have names for each other, particularly bottlenose dolphins, which have their own special whistles, just like human names. Not only do they develop this type of whistle to present themselves to other dolphins, but they can also learn other such names so they can better communicate with each other. In the depths of the Pacific Ocean, there's a mysterious singing whale, which scientists have yet to fully understand. They call it the loneliest whale, because it emits sounds at a much higher pitch than any other blue whale we've ever encountered. No one has ever seen it, though, so researchers believe its strange tune may be keeping it from actually finding a partner. Aww. Now, standard blue whales have their own particular quirk. Their hearts are more than 5 feet long. They're also about 4 feet wide and can weigh more than 400 pounds. Just to give you a better idea, your heart is roughly the size of your fist, so that would be smaller. Not that we aren't a bit intimidated by sea creatures already, but just so you know, sharks can sometimes grow thousands of teeth. And not just one or two thousand, up to 30,000 teeth over their lifetime to be precise. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see a shark's dentist bill. <laughs> Something to chew on. Scientists have yet to identify a creature on Earth that can actually live forever. But it looks like this is about to change. A tiny jellyfish that's even smaller than the nail on your pinky appears to be the living embodiment of Benjamin Button. That's because it has the ability to go back to a previous developing stage whenever it's endangered or extremely hungry and out of food. It's no surprise they earn themselves the nickname, the Immortal Jellyfish. 
We've known about this species for hundreds of years, but it took us until the 1990s to discover their unique characteristics. We're yet to be sure how it's able to produce cells that regress and regrow, but they could hold a secret that might help advances in medicine for both animals and humans.